High school is super stressful. You have GPA, AP classes or IB classes, SAT. You have ACT, SAT two, extracurricular activities, internship, and summer's coming. So there's maybe summer school, summer research. There's so many things going on. There's also friends, and if you do all those things, you don't have time for sleep. But if you try to go through everything on that list, you're doing things wrong. This is not really what colleges want you to do. Look around, think about all your friends. Do you have anyone, maybe yourself, maybe someone you know, maybe your sibling, maybe your best friend, who has GPA of 3.6 to 3.8, who gets around 13 to 1400 on the SAT, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little lower, who does extracurricular activities in sports, in music, in maybe Model UN or debate, maybe in an orchestra, everything that everyone else is doing. And if you know that someone else is doing that, or you are doing that, think about it. This is a game for kids in America, where your job is to find Waldo in a picture of many, many people. And it's really hard for you to find Waldo because there's so many people that look exactly the same or almost the same. You're trying to fit into this list of good SAT score, good GPA, having extracurricular activities, making sure that you volunteer in Cambodia to build houses. Making sure you learn an instrument, making sure you perform, making sure you go to Johns Hopkins for a CTY summer program. If you do that, it's going to be really, really hard to find Waldo over here in this picture. This is data from a website called Niche, and on the website there's this data about how Harvard students are. The green points are the students who got in. The x-axis is their SAT or ACT score. The y-axis is their GPA, and so you can see a lot of students who got into Harvard have really, really high SAT or ACT score, and they have really, really high GPA scores. A lot of them are near the top corner, which means they have almost perfect or perfect SAT and GPA. But if you look at the graph for the people who got rejected, that pretty much looks the same. It's just there's more dots on it. There are a lot of students in the top right corner. With perfect SAT, perfect GPA, and they still get rejected. If you put them together, you'll see that the data points are just proportional. The green points are less than the red points, but the distribution of the points are pretty similar. So I think this data shows that if you just look at SAT, GPA, ACT, this is not really a reliable indicator of where you will end up in college. This is the blind man and the elephant. And the story is. That a long time ago, there's this new elephant in town, and people don't know what an elephant is, so they come around and they are interested in finding out what an elephant is. The first guy touches elephant's tail and said, "Oh, elephant must be a rope." The next guy hugged the elephant's foot and said, "Oh, elephant must be a tree." Next person touches elephant's ear and said, "Oh, no, I think elephant is a fan." Next person touches elephant's nose and said, "Wait, no, elephant is a pipe." If you only look at SAT, GPA. Or if you go down that checklist, then you're pretty much like the blind man in this in this story. What do colleges really want? It's actually really easy. Colleges want everyone, anyone who is awesome, and awesome people have awesome qualities. If you're really smart, you're awesome. If you're not super smart, but if you're mature and responsible, that's also awesome. If you're skilled in something, that's awesome. If you're passionate about something, if you love sports, or if you genuinely love to play piano. That's awesome too. If you love talking to people, love being on stage, love to present, that's awesome. Leadership, teamwork, and so on. Many, many things make you awesome, and this is what colleges are looking for. But it's hard to put things into perspective on a piece of paper to show that to show what awesome is. It's hard to put a number on how awesome you are at communication skill or how awesome you are at leadership. And so, when colleges are trying to present you. Who gets into what colleges? They could only use the data that can be presented on a piece of paper, and those are GPA and SAT scores. But these are the things are what colleges care even more. These are all my friends at Harvard. In my freshman year, one of my friends who lives above my floor was on the Winter Olympics U.S. team. There's a Japanese guy in our first floor who missed almost all of high school because he had to perform violin around the world. And then there are people who get straight A's. But there are also people who get A minuses. He is from a very poor neighborhood, and he had to raise his own family as a teenager. Take a guess. Out of these five people, do you think they all received 4.0 GPA and 1,500 plus SAT? Or 
they all had the checklist. They all had clubs and sports and internship and instrument and volunteering and so on. Or are they all very impressive in their own way? And the answer is obvious. They're all very impressive in their own ways. They're not all super bright in terms of academics, but they all have their own special talent and their own special passion, and that's what they end up pursuing, and that's how they are special, and that's why they all end up at Harvard. There are many ways that you can approach this college admission process. Method one, the most common one in Asia, is to go down the checklist. First, you have to make sure that you have perfect scores to show that you are smart, you are awesome in terms of intelligence. Well, to many people, the way to prove that you are smart is to make sure that you get at least a 3.9 GPA, at least a 1500 on your SAT, and if you don't, then find tutors, pay a lot of money, study extra hard, study on weekends, take away your time for your passion in basketball or violin or anything or arts. Focus on school because school is first, right? Focus on school. Make sure you get the best grade, then worry about everything else. To pretend that you're kind-hearted, go sign up for volunteering in Cambodia, even though your passion is not in Cambodia, even though you don't really like building houses, just to pretend. You know, pretend to colleges that I love people, I love helping others, I'm going to pay a lot of money to go there and build houses, and maybe other people will think I am very kind-hearted. To show that I'm future-ready, I'm, I'm career-ready, I'm going to go sign up for a two-week internship during the summer. So that other people think I'm really good because I'm able to work in this company. To show that I'm very good at public speaking and get that extra hashtag on public speaking, I'm going to join Model UN or debate because that's what other people are joining. And then to show teamwork and leadership, I'm going to do other things like sports and clubs. This is one way to do it, but this way is really stressful for many of you because not everyone is built for school, not everyone is built for SAT and GPA, and not everyone really genuinely loves building houses in Cambodia. Not everyone loves model UN and presenting in front of a in front of an audience. You could do all these, show that you have good grades and you have volunteering and all that. But to anyone who has any common sense, they'll know that you guys are not genuinely passionate in helping others, in helping others in Cambodia at least. And so, how is that going to show to college admission officers? You guys are just pretending. Imagine a two-week internship where you go to a big company, let's say Google or Citibank. Those companies sound really cool, but you guys are really just high school students. Let's face it; it's really hard for me, as a Harvard student, majored in computer science, to find any computer science internship for two months in a company like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and in a finance job like Citibank, Goldman Sachs. If it's so hard for me to find a job there, then for a typical high school student, it's also going to be really hard. And if you only have two weeks, how are you going to contribute? The fact is, you're not going to contribute. So how is that going to show to college admission officers? You're just there. You're wasting time. You could use that time to do something else that you're genuinely passionate about, but you're not doing that because you want to pretend that you're college, you're career ready, but you're not. Leadership, teamwork, all that. Maybe if you really enjoy speaking in front of other people, you could do model UN, you could do debate, you could present things in front of other people. You could, you could do a TED talk. These are awesome. But if you're not built for that, if you don't have that personality to do all these things, these will be super stressful and boring and a waste of your time. When time comes, one or two things could happen. If you get admitted to a good college that you want to, that's awesome. All the hard work paid off. But imagine if they don't. Imagine the situation where you don't get into any schools at all. You've wasted all the money. You've got extra stress that you don't really need. You wasted four years and you end up with nothing. Let's imagine another way of approaching this college admission. You're still trying to get all those tags, but you will find your ways to show you're smart. This could be from GPA and SAT, but this could also be from street smart, from your skill in basketball, your skill in piano, your ability to organize things, to start your own online company, to get people together, to make other people happy. All those things show that you're really smart. You could get tags about your passion and your interests. From other things, think about what your strengths are. Are you really, really interested in going there to do this volunteering stuff, or are there other things that you're more interested in? If you're interested in piano, play more piano, perform, make other people happy, make other people enjoy your music. These are ways to show your passion. Do you have any weaknesses? If you have, then those are things that you shouldn't waste time on. To show that you're future ready, imagine. Five years from now, or ten years from now, sometime in the future, what job will make you happy and make you proud of yourself? 
That should be your goal. So let's say right now, you might be interested in tech, in architecture or in computer science. That's awesome. Focus on that. Anything that you do to prepare you to become a really good architect or a really good computer scientist are the, all the things that you should be doing now. Using myself as an example, in high school, I only had a 1450 SAT. To some people, this is a really good score. To my high school, I think that was top three. But to Harvard students, that sucked. So on my SAT, I wasn't the brightest, but I was able to show that I wasn't stupid and I'm somewhat smart in other fields like math and science. I was on the New York City math team. I was the math team captain for my high school, and I helped our school win seven semesters of first place in math competitions. But I realized I really sucked in U.S. history and anything that's history related. So in 12th grade, instead of trying to get into AP U.S. history like all my friends did, I should focus my attention on something else like AP Java, AP Physics, and so on. And so that's what I end up doing. So in general, for any student. If you're not academically smart, think about what you're really good at and focus on that. That could be art, that could be physics, that could be U.S. history, it could be any subject in school or outside of school. Find your passion, know what you like, and do it really, really well, and make other people feel impressed that you know that thing, that you're able to do it. You're able to do it as a teenager, something that maybe adults can't even accomplish, but you could do it as a teenager. If you love art. There are many ways for you to learn art. You don't have to pay a lot of money to go to U.S. and take art classes over the summer. You could take online classes. You could learn how to draw by yourself. You could start your own art gallery. You could do many, many things about art that can make other people think you are really cool and really awesome.、And、if you analyze the results of strategy one and strategy two, strategy one there's good and bad. If you end up with good schools, then awesome. If you end up with bad schools, then you wasted everything and there's extra stress. Strategy two, the one that I just proposed to you guys. If you end up in a good school like Harvard, MIT, U Penn, Berkeley, which many of my students end up, that's win-win situation for them because they end up in a good school, and they're career ready, and they have a very happy and memorable high school career. Even if they end up getting into their safety school, that's still fine, because they are career ready. They are ahead of other people. Other people in college are still finding their passion. They've already found it. Other people are trying to start their own business after college. They've started in high school. Getting that head start is super important. If you have that head start, then there's really no failure in high school. Everything that you try, you'll get to learn about yourself, and you can get better and better. And all these experiences make you really awesome. For my students, I ask them: Is getting into Harvard more important, or finding the future job that you want, say work at Google or start your own money-making business? Is that more important? If your answer is College is more important. There's a way to do that. You can fake your application. You could buy your test answers. You could pay money to other people to write things for you. You could end up in a good college. Or if you think your future life is more important, then why not start thinking about your future now? Thinking about what you want to do in the future, and get a head start now, so that you're more future ready. You're more life ready. I wouldn't be really interested in education if I'm prepping students for Gaokao in China. The education system in China is different. When you're in high school, you don't have to care about community service. You don't have to care about leadership. You don't have to care about growing up. You just have to care about how to get that perfect score on Gaokao. In college, you enjoy college life. You take classes. You do things in college. You worry about life after college when you're about to exit college. But I think that's bad, and it's risky, because to many students, they're not ready for future yet. And so, if you do this in three different phases, by the time when you enter the most important phase of life, you're not ready yet. And there will be a lot of problems with not being ready. Maybe you're immature. Maybe you're hard to get along with. Maybe you don't know how to take care of yourselves. Maybe you don't even know who you are. In America, before high school, you have to do extracurricular activities. You have to play basketball and swim, tracks, violin, and piano. From doing all these different activities, now you know whether you like it or not. You know whether you're good at it or not. From all the trials and errors in high school and before high school, you get to learn more about yourself. You know what subjects, what fields you are better at, and then in tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade, you can focus a little bit more on it. You could play, spend more time playing piano. You could spend more time swimming. You could spend more time studying math. That's when you start taking AP and IP classes, and that's a time where you become a little bit more focused. Then in college, you have to choose your major, but you don't choose your major until your sophomore year, and that's a really good thing. Because that means in your freshman year you still have more chances to try around different subjects that you think you might be interested, 
And then when time comes sophomore year, you focus on it. If you have more than one interest, that's awesome. You can take a major and a minor, or you can take two majors, or maybe one major and two minors, depending on the school that you end up with. But you become more and more focused, and more and more career focused and future focused, until the time when you graduate from from college, you have that job. But before you end up with that job in college, you have to be ready for that future job. And the way to be ready for that future job is to work and get internships, because that's a time where you get to know how things work in the real life, and that's a time for you to be more experienced and more future ready. So when you graduate from college, you will find that job because you're ahead of others. How can you be ahead in high school? You have to be ahead in this race and get closer to that future life that you want. It's all like a funnel, where you start general. And then you get more focus and more focus until the time where you're in college, you're focused and you're ahead of other people. If you want a good life, college is not the way to do it. Big name is not the way to do it. Harvard, MIT, Stanford is not the way to do it. If you want a good life, it's important for you right now in high school, in middle school, even in elementary school, to know know your interest, find out about yourself, be who you are, dare to be who you are. And be awesome at being who you are. Good college name really doesn't do too much for you. Thank you so much.